We're live. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hump Day Hangouts. Today is the 8th of April, 2020, and this is episode 282. Um, actually, can't remember this. Do you guys know if there's a word for like numbers that are the same backwards as forwards? Because I know there's a word for it, but I just thought I'd get awkward right off the bat and get this, get this out of the way. All right. Nobody. All right. Well, let's keep rolling on. We got uh, some good stuff for you coming up. Um, we do have a few announcements. I'm going to say hi to the guys real quick. Uh, so let's get started with that. I'm going to switch things up today. We'll start at the bottom of my screen. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing good. Have you noticed? Quarantine hump day is special. It is. I think everyone's a little uh, loopier. This is definitely a little bit more energy, good or bad. It's still to be decided, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. How about you? You uh, you surviving there? Yeah, like uh, we actually could. Like we cut... Uh, um... Curve. I think we have had like I don't know like 250 cases or so, it's at least below 300 new cases a day. So we're on the good path. Um, they're already talking about like opening things up again and stuff. So can't complain. Like I'm looking forward to it. Cool, cool. Marco, how about you? How are you doing today? It looks uh, relatively sunny. <laughs> relatively. <laughs> uh, the 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 wet season has decided that it's not going to show its face yet. And so we're still waiting. Unfortunately, guys, it's, it's still warm and sunny in Costa Rica. I don't know about the rest of the world, but at least here, th this is what I get every day. So it'll, it'll turn soon. You'll, you guys will see. You won't be able to hear me uh, speak from, from the sound of the rain hitting the, the roof. Other than that, I mean, th things are good. Still in quarantine, I don't mind. can always find positives in, in, in all the and all the negatives. I've been, I've been really productive. I know that yeah. putting out a whole bunch of software, improving our uh, WordPress plugin. It's available only to mastermind members who donate to Marco's chart. Other than that, things are great. I, I'm not really a complainer. I only complain about Google giving people misinformation. That, that's when I get upset. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Hernan, how about you? It looks like it's already the dead of winter for you. Like you're gonna freeze. Yeah, hoodie. It's yeah. It's a hoodie season. Starting the hoodie season, that means that I get I get my get my ass get to freeze my ass for the next couple of months. <laughs> but uh, other than that, man, it's good. It's good. We're healthy. We're good. We're safe. So uh, business is good. So life's good. So that's cool. So um, I've been seeing you know like everybody you know you click on someone's uh, stuff like. Um, I know my mother-in-law who maybe is watching uh, Hump to Hang Out. She watches this sometimes and she's clicked on our stuff. And she's like, Adam, I see your ads all over the place. And I was like, well, I'd like to take credit for that, but that's mostly her non. But yeah, that right. is us. Yeah, yeah, but I saw you were uh, you were having a course about ads, weren't you? Or what, what are you running right now? I'm just so yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, you know, like I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to help. So there's there's a couple of things that I think that they're going to be like super in demand over the next couple of months. One of them being SEO, you know, because a lot of a lot of businesses are pivoting from offline stuff to online stuff. So one of the things being SEO. So, you know, you're in the right place if you're watching this and you want to get prepared. Another thing is going to be copywriting. Another thing is going to be email marketing, which is what you're doing. Another thing is going to be definitely media buying. So. Um, so, yeah, I've been trying to to help as much people as possible. And then, yeah, creating a little bit of omnipresence as well for the brand, mostly because ads are so cheap right now, and it's a it's a good opportunity to to invest in building your brand. So that's basically definitely. Cool. Well, that's awesome. I know Hernan's got training, um, and then Bradley's got local training, especially. Um, I mean, it applies beyond local. But uh, if you are part of Two X Your Agency to, at Two X Your Agency .com, um, you can get access. We do a uh, there is a limited offer or one time offer if you join Two X Your Agency. Uh, to get some of that additional training at a real steal. Uh, we made it uh, a really cool price for people who took action and, and joined 2 your agency. Um, with that said, since I've talked about them, but haven't introduced them, how are you doing today, Bradley? Doing great, man. And to kind of back, uh, back up what Hernan said, even Google ads are a lot cheaper right now. I set up a cold traffic uh, campaign yesterday with, for you, for, um, with the YouTube video. I'm running a test in the mastermind, <clears throat> trying to rank a local landing page with nothing other than um, the SEO location shield, not even the full shield and in relevant traffic using Google ads. And that's it. So no other SEO work done to it. And so I set up a cold traffic campaign with for YouTube ads yesterday. And, um, or I guess it was two days ago. 
And it's already, you know, received close to a thousand views on a $5 per day budget. And the view, the average cost per view is two cents, which is crazy for cold traffic. Usually it's around somewhere around 18 to 20 cents ish in that neighborhood for these type of campaigns. And it's two cents. So that's incredibly inexpensive, guys. Uh, I, I encourage you to do what uh, Hernan said, and that is run some ads right now while it's cheap. So if you're not good at ads right now is a really good time to start playing with them so that you can get better at them while they're very, very inexpensive. Yeah. To, to add to what, what Bradley just said real quick is that there's, there's two things. Number one, for everyone that watches a YouTube video, you can build an audience, right? Yes. So you can build an audience of people that watch a YouTube video. You can do the same with Facebook. So basically what you're doing is you're building audiences at a discount right now and have in mind that this is an elections here in the, in the, in the U S right. So, and you know, big companies and uh, political parties, they have a budget and they're going to spend it. They're going to spend it either in like 12 months or they're going to spend it in six months. So November, September, October, November, December, provided that, you know, everything gets back to normal and we're good. October, November is going to be like super, super, like there's going, there, there, there's, we're building, we're seeing how a lot of pressure, like budget pressure is being built because a lot of people are not able to spend right now. So they're going to double the budgets, you know, over the next six months. So uh, this is the time to advertise. This is time to get good at it because everything's so expensive. So I've, I've seen CPMs, which is what the networks charge us to advertise, drop by 50%. So that means that if you had a hundred dollars a day budget, that means that that doubled, you know, so now you're getting a $200 a day budget. So it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm really excited about that. We're definitely, you know, on the offensive when everyone is else is kind of retreating. We're trying to, you know, grab that market share. So recommend you do it too. Nice. Nice. And uh, we talked about 2X your agency a little bit, and that's definitely for people uh, in general. You can come in if you don't have clients, but we highly recommend if you have a client or you've had a client before, you understand at least the basics that you can then take it and scale up from there. Um, you know, if you want to get more clients, you want to grow your revenue, scale your team. Um, then 2 agency.com is the place to go. We are going to be having a webinar uh, coming up hopefully next week. If not by next week, it'll be out the week after that uh, for people who are more interested on, hey, how do I get this started? You know, there's a lot of hurdles. Um, and I know that there's a lot of training out there, you know, that's like, hey, you can come watch this webinar and we'll show you the one weird trick to, you know, to getting clients. Like, well, guess what? It's not one weird trick. We know that there's more than one hurdle. Uh, for everybody. And we're going to cover a lot of this, uh, the common issues, as well as some other ones that, that come up, especially in our industry and digital marketing uh, to help you get started, whether you want to have an agency or you just want to start consulting. Maybe, you know, you've realized, hey, maybe I need to do this on the side, or you're kind of dipping your toes in as you're starting to transition away, or you want to transition away from a job. So um, that will be coming out soon. We'll definitely let everybody know about that. Uh, in the meantime, of course, if you want to get step-by-step -step processes with everything for new websites, age domains, YouTube channels, uh, so much more. You can check out the battle plan at battleplan.semanticmastery.com. And for all of your done for you services, whether it's syndication networks, link building, press releases, ROS drives, tax, uh, everything else, head over to mgyb.co. That said, guys, I think that's about it. Unless we got uh, last minute announcements, looks like we got a ton of questions today. Yeah, I imagine it's because everybody's home <laughs> <laughs> with little to do, but think about, you know, what they can ask. <laughs> so, that's good though. That's what that's what these are for. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. I'm gonna go one one, one last thing. Actually, seriously, everybody here, like, who has little to do of us? I'm sorry. Does anyone of us have little to do right now? Oh no, no. I've got more to do right now. Same here. Like literally, like we we're working like crazy. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. There's no. You know, like I, like Hernan said last week, I guess he was, I've been preparing for this my entire life. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's get into this, guys, and forgive the uh, hump day hangouts <laughs> uh, memes that we got going on over here. Anyways, all right, starting with Justin. <clears throat> What's the best way to to get our main target pages syndicating through our IFTTT network since the RSS feed only triggers or feed trigger only has posts, a WordPress plugin. Yeah, there's one called RSS includes pages. Um, I haven't used that plugin in a long time though, but yeah, you can check it out and see. I don't know if, I don't know if it's still, there it is right there. Um, so RSS includes pages. It was just updated a month ago. So it, it's probably, it, it, it probably still works. 
Um, I haven't tested it in a long time, but that's how I used to use it. And look, there's a pro version for 10 bucks. By the way, this is the same developer as the RS um, republish old posts, right? Which I've talked about that a lot. Let me pull that one up too. <clears throat> because that's the same developer. I just noticed that. And what's cool about these is I'm, I'm, the reason I'm telling you about both about this one too, republish old posts is because you can use this to automate republishing stuff that's already been published on your on your site. So if you're using the RSS includes pages plugin, I'm sure it integrates with this so that you can also republish old um, pages in the pages RSS feed, if that makes sense. You see what I'm saying? So if you connect already public, like an RSS feed with already published posts to a network, it's not going to syndicate to that network. It only will syndicate for new posts detected in that feed. So the same would go for an RSS include or an, uh, a pages feed, an RSS pages feed, right? So if you connect the, or install the RSS includes pages plugin, and then connect it to your syndication network, it's just, it's not gonna automatically syndicate all your pages. It's not, it doesn't work like that. So that's why I would also install this one, republish old posts, because then you can set parameters as to, you know, how often you want them to republish. Like, so for example, you could have something republish every six months or just once or whatever the case is. And what's cool about the uh, Republish Old Post plugin guys is they've got a pro version, it's less than $10 and it looks like, which is worth it because it gives you a hell of a lot more functionality by the way, um, for less than 10 bucks. And the same thing it looks like for ISS includes pages, same thing, they've got a pro version. So I would check that out if that's something that you wanna do. Um, and that makes sense for older sites maybe if you didn't, weren't thinking about syndicating when you were building the site, that kind of stuff, then it makes sense to maybe do something like that. He has, he has no posts. That's the whole point behind, behind this. Cause I, I remember this from, uh, from dealing with this in Facebook, he has no posts, so he has pages and so he wants to syndicate pages, but how many pages does he have to syndicate? Is it even worth the time to go through all that to syndicate? I don't know, four or five pages. If you have hundreds of pages where you're going to silo and, and support uh, categories and with, other pages and all of that, I then totally, but I don't see what, if, if you have a five or 10 page website, how much that's going to help. Because yeah, the whole point I behind mean. the syndication network is to publish content on a regular basis. Agreed. But, you know, it's something that he could do going forward is publish posts on a regular basis to that site. But in the meantime, syndicate existing pages if, if, if that's what you desire to do, Justin. So check it out. Nathan's up. He says, in local PR pro, you suggest including a link to money site URL, either brand anchor or naked URL. Do you only link to money site URL on the first PR? Then after that, you don't link to money site anymore. I can't imagine it's helpful to link to the same money site URL on every PR. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't, I don't remember ever saying link to the same money site uh, URL, the same site URL. I said link to the money site, which if you're publishing content on a regular basis, why not link to new content, right? Isn't that an excuse to publish a press release? When you publish a blog post, you could use publish a press release uh, announcing or highlighting, showcasing the blog post, right? And that's exactly what I talked about in the update webinar, uh, which again, you can, you can find it on the, at the mgyb.co store. Uh, the, if you click on webinars, you can go to our YouTube channel. You can um, search for uh, PR, press, press release SEO or P, uh, and PR silo stacking, whatever. You'll, you'll see the update webinar that we just did a few months ago. Um, and it talks about si using, it was the update for local PR pro, but we made it public, which was <clears throat> for press release stacking. We do it in silo format now. And the way that I do it is the same, like all my bloggers handle it now, but what, what they do is they publish a blog post, then they publish a corresponding GMB post that links to the blog post, right? And it's basically promoting the blog post. Then they publish a press release that is promoting the blog post, either by linking directly to the blog post or linking to the GMB post, and then linking to the previous press release in the same silo, and then linking to, if we want, we link to any other uh, branded tier one entity URL, if that makes sense. So uh, again, it's not linking to the same money site URL, it's linking to the money site, but it's linking to different blog posts, or it could be different landing pages, anything at all. I, I didn't, I didn't say link to the same page. I said link to the same money site. So there you go. Anybody want to comment on that? Okay, moving on. 
DC SEO says, hi guys, can you tell me exactly what I need from you to give me my site the push it needs to make it to take it from top of page three to page one. It's for local service and I'm, I'm looking to dominate my local market. I was looking at the shield. Is that right? Same question for my GMP, GMB page. What do you recommend to make it more visible? Yeah, the uh, SEO Power Shield, which includes the syndication network, drive stack, G site, and ID page, Impress Advantage organization page, and everything gets all tied together. Um, and then from there, it's just a matter of link building, embeds and link building to your tier one entity assets, which include basically your SEO shield. Uh, but you want to include all your GMB assets in that as well, which when you order the SEO power shield, um, you, it, there's a, there's an entire section for all your GMB info. Um, so that's, that's basically it. And then, you know, publish content regular and consistently, both to the money site, if you have a blog and to the GMB, which is exactly what I just talked about. My, my bloggers kill three birds with one stone. One blog post creates a blog post, GMB and a press release, right? So GMB post and a press release. And so all three of those get done with one blog post. They draft one blog post and, it, and from there they create the GMB post with just a snippet from the blog post. Then they go into, well, I have my own press advantage account, but if, you, if they were ordering through MGYB, it'd be the same thing. They go to MGYB and order a press release and just link, put, uh, put in the order description, please write a press release to, uh, to promote this blog post and then put a link to the blog post. And that's primarily it. If uh, and and then from there it gets the you know the, the the press release writers take over, so it's very easy to do that way. Um, and that's and in relevant traffic too, but on a purely SEO basis, just the SEO power shield and in publishing content consistently, uh, regularly is what I should say. And then link building and embed gigs to your SEO shield, your entity assets, which includes your GMB stuff. Comments, guys. Yeah, I would add to that, make sure that the uh, structured data is right and that the on-page is right. Yeah, and that your entity is not ambiguated. Um, and this will help all of that as well. That's a good question though, excuse me. Fitz is up, what's up Fitz? He says, good day gents, thanks for this platform where you give real world and actionable answers. If you syndicate your blog through IFTTT, then send a snippet of the same blog through your GMB, then back to IFTTT via GMB to zap to Zapier, is that bad idea? Would you make recommend to write city pages? Um, thanks, and Marco's charity link, please. Okay, so Marco, he wants to charity link again. Um, it's already on the page. Okay. And then back to IFTTT via GMB to Zapier, is that bad idea? Well, not necessarily. I mean, you know, here's the thing. My, my curators, my bloggers curate blog posts on the money site. So they're curated posts. Well, GMB posts have a 1500 character limit, unless that's been lifted recently, um, which I'm not sure if it has or hasn't. Uh, but that means, you know, typically for blog, for GMB posts, my, my, my bloggers would just grab a snippet of, you know, like the opening paragraph, for example, from the curated blog posts that they're going to create a GMB post from. They'll use the same featured image, which if you're going to be um, creating GMB posts, you might want to have a different image because otherwise the same featured image gets posted and you will see that that's very apparent when you look at it, that you'll see, you know, two posts with the same image on the web 2.0 sites. Uh, but yeah, the, the post itself isn't an exact duplicate on GMB as it was on the blog post because of the, the character limit restrictions, right? So it's really like a snippet in the GMB post that just says, you know, here's the idea of the post, read more, and it links to the blog post, right? So in that respect, it's, it's still unique. And if you use a different image in the GMB post than you do as the featured image in blog post, then it, it shouldn't be any problem. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Oh, who would you recommend to write city pages? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, I don't. I don't write city pages anymore. I do everything through blog posts now um, because of the way that I do locations-based silos, which I can't talk about here, but I use tags to create location-based silos, not your typical or traditional category silo structure, uh, category post silo structure. I do everything with tags now for location. And so those become posts. So all location pages now are actually posts and they're just curated posts. My, my, my VA just curates just like she does any other blog post, but they're optimized for a specific location plus a specific, a specific service. Um, so I don't, I don't recommend anybody for writing city pages uh, other than just find a good writer and you should have a good writer on your team fits for as long as you've been doing this and coming here and asking questions. 
So I would just find a good writer. Um, by the way, just so you guys know, this is a, a source that I've been using recently for some articles outside of curated stuff. It's called crowdcontent.com. They've got a really good platform, um, a little bit pricier, but the, I found the articles from here are so much better. In fact, I'm not going to give you my writer's name in here, but I, I hooked up with a guy in here that I send all of my articles to now directly to this guy uh, because he's really, really good. And for so, so for example, when, when I'm writing, uh, getting in-depth articles written for landing pages, so top of silo stuff, I'm getting between 1,500 to 2,000 word articles now for top of silo stuff. And um, I'm paying 12 cents per word. So, you know, 240 bucks for a 2,000 word article, but it becomes, you know, the top of the silo, which is the most important thing. Um, and so I think it's worth it. So they, and again, that's, he's, a, he's considered an excellent writer or whatever inside there. Uh, there are different levels and things, but anyways, check it out. And they've got some automation. Um, like you can, you can actually, you know, hire a writer to write, you know, a blog post a week or, or something like that. And there's, uh, 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 it connects to WordPress and all kinds of stuff. It's a really cool system, crowd content. Check it out. Anybody want to comment on that? Okay, moving on. All right, um, Omar, thank you for the value to provide on Hunting Hangouts. My question is, what did Bradley do to get a knowledge panel for a keyword related to his real estate business? I strengthened the entity, structured data, SEO shield, and then I ran relevant traffic to my entity, right? To my, uh, basically to the landing page or any of my entity assets. That's all I did. 100%, I swear that is all I've done. And that you can do the same thing in pretty much any industry if you strengthen the entity enough and then run enough relevant traffic to it. Um, it'll, that's what, remember, and I'll, Marco can explain this way better than I can, but that's what the original uh, RYS drive stack is for. It's about creating that brand association with your primary keyword. That's what we do when you buy or drive stacks from us, like an SEO power shield, for example, it's for us to create that keyword association with, for your primary keyword with the brand. Then if you want to theme mirror and silo your drive stack, um, then that's where like the location shield would come in, right? Because that would be for like individual locations, or you could mirror folders inside and then like, you know, create the silo structure, mirror the silo structure that you have on your site. But the primary drive stack is to, to create that association between the brand name and the keyword. So that's step one. And then step two is relevant traffic that engages with the entity. So what, what does that mean? It means land on the page and then interact with the site or complete the conversion goal, which in my case for the real estate business is people either clicking the tap to call button, which is registered through Tag Manager and Google Analytics and, and Google conversion tracking. So Google's aware of the conversion goal being completed or completing the property assessment worksheet, which is basically a contact form um, and submitting that. And all of those things are really strong signals that will cause that brand association for the primary keyword. Marco, take over, please. Yeah, I mean, a knowledge panel is, is drawn from, from several different things. Google goes out and tries to find anything it can about you, you being your, well, let's call it your, your entity, your, whatever it is that you're doing on the web, your thing on the web. So Google will go out and pull all of the information that it can from all of these different sources. There's some that are more important uh, than others. And getting all of this information together is, is also really important. Getting all, getting these mentions, which, which is what we do. I mean, we, we do it uh, through our uh, T1 branded, where we're, we're in the more important uh, web 2.0 and social media platforms that, 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 that there are. So we're there, we associate it through our, through our structured data. We feed the bot the information, we loop the bot in organizational information, then we reinforce the, 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 the information with something like press advantage and, and that media center where, where all the organization information is, is there. And the Google starts recognizing the trust and the authority and, and all of the relationships, all, all of, of course, it's, it's, it's a semantic web, all of the semantic relationships that you've created for, for your thing on the web. So it's not just about Wikipedia, although you could do it with just Wikipedia, but it's very difficult. All right, so, so I, I call it like this. It's almost impossible for Joe to get 
into Wikipedia because there's nothing to back up Joe the plumber. But Larry the cable guy can get into Wikipedia because that, and now we're talking about a comedian, actor, <laughs> guy that wrote those stupid Christmas songs. All this stuff coming together is what creates this, this knowledge panel. So yeah, uh, branded searches will of course influence all of this, but get, giving Google as much information as possible about your entity is what actually brings this all together so that you can have a knowledge panel about your thing. You're trying to become the best answer for the entity, for example, it, uh, with, with uh, Bradley, it's in, in the sell land uh, or buy land or in, the, in real estate. And so he's looking to become the best entity in that niche. And one of those things is you pull up a, a knowledge panel when you do enough of it. Yeah, that's it. And so I just pulled this up just to show it. And guys, that's what I'm saying. Like if we actually go take a look at the the actual brand search, you'll see. I mean, I'm not hiding anything here, guys. I've been real open about this project uh, with you guys since day one, um, especially in the mastermind, but even in publicly, uh, which I don't typically do. And you can see, like, I'm not building citations at all, um, not structured citations. Like, I, I've done a few press releases, but all that has ever been done is what you can see through the brand search. You can see what's been built. Um, and then, like I said, it's a single page landing page, but I have structured data, right, with the same as attributes, very, the, the, the most powerful of them, which, by the way, guys, get so something really, really powerful. If you don't already, right there, crunch base. One of the things that, because Crunchbase feeds the semantic uh, web, like it's a semantic database, right? So my point is Crunchbase is one of the most powerful citations you can possibly have for the semantic web. So get on that Crunchbase and create a profile for your corporation or organization or whatever, and then fill it out as much as possible. And as you can see, you can put website link, your social media, you can actually scroll down and take a look at, uh, you can add basically like for example, press releases down here. Um, so you can see that this is just one. I can go, I, sh I should have a VA going in here and adding press releases as they're published, but this one's about a year old and it's still in there. So my point is Crunchbase is one of the most powerful citations that you can possibly create. And it's gonna really help, um, not, I'm not saying it's gonna make a knowledge panel pop, but it's one of the things that can do that, right? That can, that can cause that. And so that's what that, and you can see how powerful it is for my entity because with the brand search, it shows up as number four, just below the, the main entity website, right? So the, the primary domain, Facebook sites, Google, the Google site, right? Which is the drive stack um, and then the crunch base. So you can see how powerful that is for Google to put that in number four position, right? And so that's all I did. And again, if you just take a look at the page source for alpha land, real, alpha land dot realty, you can see these are the most powerful same as links for my entity, which is why I included them. And that ended up causing my knowledge panel to be associated with my primary keyword, Cell Land Fast Virginia. There, there's my uh, brand name for Cell Land Fast Virginia. It's also showing in related searches. Does that make sense? So yeah, can you do a, a quick brand search for Land Solutions Network? Because I think that's starting to pop a, a knowledge panel also. It's one of the things that I need to update. Boom. Look at that. Sweet. Well, Sites.google.com. Yeah, that, site. that, yep. that one was strictly done. And, and, and you guys know, because I've also been very transparent about this. Two press releases. It took to pop that knowledge panel. This is just there. You're, you're actually above me for the general term now. So land fast. Look. But it don't work. Look at that. But yeah, it shit work. doesn't work, man. It, it don't it. work. Drive stacks don't work because <laughs> Google Google could catch on at any minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. I did it. I did it differently than you did because I, I haven't run any uh, branded or any ads uh, branded uh, uh, for branding, right? I've done it. People know if you've been in, in the charity webinar that you know exactly how this was done. If you've been keeping up with, with the updates that I've been giving people in, in Facebook and the different groups, I've been doing live streaming. I'll go on later this afternoon because this is what this is one of the things that I wanted to update is, uh, yeah, I mean, the, it just goes to show that there's different ways to do this. Right? There, there isn't just one, one, one certain way, there's different ways that you can get the same results. But I'll tell you, the key in all of this is that structured data 
and getting that ad ID page, looping the bot. And I, I, I think I even included a link, a link in one of their press releases to the S3 page, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm mapping it's, my domains for the most part um, through Amazon, I'm, well, through Cloudflare, so that I use a subdomain for my primary domain for my ID page. It's not necessary, but I, I like to do that too. Um, so, yeah, I didn't do that. My mine stayed in S3, and then uh, in the G site when in, uh, embedded in the G site. It's different ways, man. It's different yep. ways, but they work. It's basically the same concept. It's branding, guys. Brand, brand, brand. I've been saying this for years, and people are just now catching on. And they're like, you know, this, this is like uh, next best. This is next level. This is high level. I've been telling you for, for years to do this because it's the semantic web. It's only logical for this to happen. Brand plus keyword location. Brand plus location plus keyword association. We've been telling you this since, seems like forever. And people are just now catching on. If you had to pay attention from the beginning, how far ahead would you be of the competition? So get to it, do this shit right. And we're showing you live the kind of results that you can get. There you go. Big Billy's got several questions. We don't typically allow that. And we do got a ton of questions. So we'll try to get through uh, at least one or two of these and then we'll come back if we can, Billy. He says, hey guys, I'm getting some negative SEO to my e-com stores, categories, and product pages. Someone is doing really sloppy SEO intentionally to over-optimize me and sending links from bad neighborhoods. Other than disavowing them, what else can I do or what services can I do or can I buy from you guys that would end or reduce the effect it's having on my site? I was thinking to create a hub page with all the product page URLs, naked links, and a Google Sheet and have Dedia embed that across his 2.0s and then pummel it, pummel it with the strongest linking packages thoughts. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to turn this one over to Marco entirely, but typically for like, I've done it disavowing stuff, but I haven't done that in quite a while, actually. And really I would just strengthen the entity as much as possible with like an SEO power shield. Um, and then, yeah, just start, you know, slamming all of those entity assets to power them up as much as possible. So that will dilute or eliminate like the effect of the negative SEO. But Marco, you have more experience with this. What, what, what do you suggest? I, I've never disavowed a link in my life, and nor do I plan to ever disavow a link. I just do more of the good stuff to counteract the bad stuff. I mean, it's, it's just a matter of getting, the, again, you go back to brand. If your brand is strong, if, you, if you've done the entity work correctly, all of this negative shit that people do will just turn into good shit. It'll just, I mean, we, we showed that DC Plumber. We hit our own stuff with, 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 with this stupid, crazy links porn. And all kinds of crap, and and it's still ranking number one to this day. Yeah. And so, moral of the story is, if, if you have the SEO, we call it the SEO shield, the SEO power shield for a reason. We call it worryless SEO for a reason. We call it entity-based worryless SEO for a reason. I mean, all of this shit, negative SEO and disavowing, man, I, it, it, that would drive me crazy trying to do all that and giving Google all, all of that information. I don't, I don't care for them to know all of that shit that me disavowing links is clearly an SEO working in the space. Why, why, why else would you even know that, that, that you're, ha you're getting negative SEO and, and that you have all of these uh, crappy links coming at you? Get a whole bunch of really good links to dilute any uh, of the negative or maybe turn the negative into a positive. Get that uh, power shield in place. Get all of those good links uh, flowing. Get that entity get that structured data right guys get this work, go work on your structured data go right click on semanticmastery.com look at the at the code look at the source code and look at look at the structured data work that we've done look at looking last solutions if you want i told you that, that that's open to you guys to inspect and and tear down any any way you want do anything you want with it i welcome it because it's only gonna help me and so anything that, that you try to I, I don't worry about it I just don't. Why? We haven't worried about an update in, in how long? Five, five, well, August. Knock on will wood. Will be five August. years. Yep. Since the release of our way. Yeah, of course, knock on wood, because Google can change things at any time. I, I'm not expecting it right now, but at some point, at some point, but I, I, I'll worry about that when that time comes, not right now. So the next question, also a technical question on embeds, the knowledge graph. 
can that be embedded to make it stronger? I don't know. I don't, I've never tried to embed a knowledge graph. I don't know that you can. Marco, do you know if you can? The knowledge, uh, I know that you cannot embed the knowledge panel. The panel, that's what I meant. Yeah. No. So there is this though. Okay. So you see right here, like my company, Big Bamboo Marketing, as well as me personally, because years ago when we still had access to, what was it called? Freebase. Freebase was a semantic web entity, uh, or excuse me, semantic database that we used to be able to add details to, add entities to. Um, but they, Google bought it and they stopped allowing, um, so this is, a, this, is, this is an actual knowledge panel or, or with, uh, for an entity, a semantic entity, right? Does that make sense? It looks different. So for example, Big Bamboo Marketing, if you see underneath my normal knowledge panel, you see this right here, which would be considered uh, an entity panel, I guess. I don't know what the actual name of it is, but if we click through to that, you'll see that it creates this different kind of search. It's still the same search phrase, but it's got this, and I don't know why it's only got one profile in there because on, on me personally, you can see it's got all of my profiles, but this, if you click the share button, let's go back to the company instead of a personal, if we click the share button, it gives you this, this URL here. And that right there is something that if we were to go look at it in a um, like where it goes, for example, you'll see that that's, that's a 302. So it's not a great URL, but if you take the final version of it, let's see if where it goes is working today. There it is. So it's a 302 re redirect to a meta refresh to this final target URL here. So if I copy that and I go view that, again, it's just going to bring up that same uh, search as before. But my point is, is that these types of URLs right here are what I would consider, um, you know, entity type um, targets, if that makes sense, because that's what MREID, that's what those are. Th these right here are called MREIDs, which is machine readable entity IDs. Does that make sense? But for like Alpha Land Realty, on the other hand, that I don't have an actual semantic entity in, um, for, for that, if that makes sense. So it's a little bit different. Now I've done some link build, so you can see it doesn't have that separate box down here. That because it doesn't have an MREID, machine readable entity ID. The older stuff that I was able to add as a semantic entity into the uh, Freebase at the time, um, you know, they do have them. So you can do some pretty cool things with those. For example, you can build links to this. Uh, you could also drive traffic to it, um, which can also help to cause that knowledge panel association with the keyword. So there's different things that you can do with that if that's available. But for your standard knowledge panel, if it doesn't have that entity ID um, also, then I'm, I don't know that you can do anything with that other than what Marco just said. So I just thought I'd share that little lesson there because they are different. When you look at these, this type of a thing that has that little share button right there, that means it has a semantic entity or it is a semantic entity. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyways, moving on. Uh, the last part of this, and I'm just going to glance over this really quickly. We'll come back to this if we have time, Billy. But um, for your G sites, mirror, take your G site and just iframe in your e comm site pages so that people can still buy <laughs> directly from the G site. That's what I would suggest. But I'm going to keep moving, guys, because we've already answered two questions for him. We'll come back if we can, Billy. Um, next is number one, do, does the backlinks and press release package order have to be in English? Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Press release definitely. Yeah. Can someone give you non-English keywords for those packages? No, for because the, all the content for, is in English. Yeah. For the, for the link building, yeah. I don't know, Dadia, we'd have to talk to Dadia, but we, we can't, we can't do one of us, right? Not, not one of, it's one of a kind. And so it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, number two is how do you, how do you build links exponentially rather than <laughs> linearly? <laughs> uh, and then linearly. That I, that's that's hard to say. So I imagine it's also hard to spell. But linearly. So yeah, that's, how do you that's, build links exponentially instead of in a linear fashion? Right. That's not something I'm giving away for free. <laughs> no, Sorry. but it has something to do with iframes, right? Uh, yeah, not 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 necessarily. That 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 could be one. There's other ways, but I'm not sharing it free. 
Yeah, and I, I certainly wouldn't share the technique either, but think of an ID page with the iframe stacking. That's kind of an exponential link building method, right? That's one of them. Yeah, well, the iframe, the iframe is what it exponential it doesn't have. It has a similar, but it's yeah. not the same. Yeah, it's, but it's not the same. What exactly is going inside the backlinks packages? Um, well, if you buy contextual web 2.0s, they're contextual web 2.0s. If you buy GSA, then it's all the different link types that GSA can uh, provide. So um, we do contextual web 2.0s, what we recommend for tier one and tier two links. So when I say tier one link building, that's actually tier two links because it's building links to your tier one Right, so it's the first tier of link building, like spam links, to your tier one entity assets. So that it, in all reality, is second tier links, but it's the first tier of link building. Anyways, that said, uh, we recommend on for the first tier and second tier of link building, you do contextual web 2.0s. That's per Dedia's recommendations in all the testing that we've done over the years. Um, and then we, you can back it up with a third tier of GSA or a fourth tier, as many as you want. And GSA is going to include whatever <clears throat> link targets are in GSA. Okay. Just for clearing, guest blogging and other hard backlink methods basically dead by using the shield. No more money sent light site links. Yeah, I mean it's unnecessary. You don't need to. Um, you know, guest post guest blogging and stuff like that can, if it's done correctly, can be extremely powerful and generate relevant traffic from a you know relevant audience that could be interested in your product or service. So I'm not saying don't do it, uh, you know, if that's part of your overall strategy for drive, driving traffic and lead generation and sales and that kind of stuff, but it's not necessary, right? It's not something that you have to do because we've proven over and over and over again that we can get results using the SEO shield and spam links and just and content marketing, right? Just, you know, that's, that's about it. All right. So, so there are so many target URLs within the SEO power shield that you don't have to do that to the money site. You can actually do a guest posting and you and put a push a link to your GMB to a GMB post to the GMB website to the drive stack to an inner page on the G site, which they all connect to the money site, but you're not hitting it directly. That's that's why we moved like one tier out. So we leave the money site alone. It'll collect links on its own and naturally. And, and then the rest will come from the power in, in the SEO power shield and then everything associated with the SEO power shield, right? So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying whether, whether it works or not. Like I don't guest blog and I don't use other uh, hard, what he's calling hard backlinking methods. I, I just don't, because I don't need to. If I ever needed to, I'd probably go and test it out. Uh, heavy hitter, uh, the, the Membership site is ready. We're getting getting everything together to to go live on that project, and that's one of the things that we probably test in the heavy hitter pull up to see how much more we can get. But when, like when, when when you got enough to go to number one, I mean, how much better than number one can you get when you're already number one? Yeah, right. Except for the fact that, like I said, guest blog or you know guest post done correctly on the right sites for the right audience can generate a shit ton of relevant traffic and generate leads and or sales too, if it's done correctly. The problem is a lot of, there's a lot of SEO services out there that will sell guest posts strictly for the SEO, like the, the backlink. And that's, in my opinion, that's useless. I mean, because of the methods that we have developed that work just fine. I'm not, you know, again, to each their own. I'm not saying don't, you know, if somebody else, if, if that's their strategy, so be it. For our strategy, it doesn't make sense to build guest post links just for the link itself. And let, but for, for the traffic and exposure and relevant audience, potentially leads and sales, um, that, then it does make sense to do that. Um, if, if, if you can do, and, and so by the way, so who can do that that well? Uh, I've only found one service that is really good at that, um, that I've used, which is Loganix. And we've talked about them in the past, but uh, Loganix, go to semanticmastery.com slash L-O-G-A-N-I-X, and it'll take you to their site. And um, they've got a, a really good service for that now. In fact, um, Adam Steele, the owner of that, has, it's L-O-G-A-N-I-X. Uh, <clears throat> Adam Steele has created a really good service around that. In fact, it's one of their 
best services now. If you take a look at it, they have um, the link building right here. And they've got some really good traffic to sites there. It's, it's expensive, but it's, it's, work, it, it's worth it if, if that's part of your overall strategy. So I just, I would suggest them if you're going to look for that kind of stuff. Okay. But again, you don't need it. If you got the SEO shield, <laughs> you can throw spam links at it all day long. All right. Nigel's up. He says, what's up, Nigel? He says, hope you guys and your families are all doing well. Blessings and thanks. You're welcome. What is the best done for you package specifically for podcasts? And in your opinion, what are the three must do things for podcasts specifically? Okay. So I'm not sure which, like you're talking about for getting on podcasts or for promoting your own podcast. I don't really know. I'm going to answer one thing that I, first of all, uh, and maybe you can set, clarify it. Um, but as far he's as talking, you think he's talking about how to promote a podcast, Bradley, that's the way I would read it. That's how you read it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well then I'll just point this out for anybody else's benefit very quickly, but interview valet is a company that we used. It's a concierge service to, to get booked. Like, so in other words, they, we hired them to pitch semantic, well, pitch me representing semantic mastery and MGYB uh, to a bunch of podcasts uh, that have relevant audiences and super powerful guys. You can drive, drive a lot of traffic, um, you know, relevant traffic and generate leads and everything using this. It's a great, great service. Had a really good experience with them. So I would point that out for those of you that are looking to get exposure on other people's podcasts. We talk about that in 2X Your Agency and we talked about it a lot at Pofu Live. Uh, so I would, I would check that out. But as far as promoting that, um, I don't know because I don't, I don't have a podcast. What do you guys think? So, turn on, Marco? So <clears throat> so yeah, there's there's a couple of options here. Um, so the first one is uh, the first one is is pretty easy. You would treat a podcast. So let's say that you have a podcast and you're uploading that to something like Libsyn or something similar like SoundCloud, which are you know the podcast hosting services. And and then they will have first off those will have an RSS feed, right? And <clears throat> Libsyn when you, they're posting because Libsyn will syndicate to i to iTunes to Stitcher. To a bunch of other places and those are live links back to your website right that is number one but also number two uh libsyn has a wordpress plugin that will allow you to automatically publish your podcast episodes in your website so if you think about it you have the rss feed from libsyn and you also have the rss feed from your website you can definitely do the seo shield make sure that each podcast episode both the description and the title of the podcast are keyword reach so that you can actually get ranked. So you can you will treat each podcast episode as, as a blog post. You would interlink yeah. them. You will do whatever you have to do, you know, proper SEO. There's, there's even a schema markup for podcasts. So you would have either a website or a category on your own, on your own website that you can have those podcast episodes posted. Every time you upload a podcast episode, it will, you know, Po get posted on your website, will get syndicated out. You can burn through FeedBurner your uh, Libsyn feed. And then, you know, the rest is game over. Like you would use the exact same methodology that you would with a regular blog post. Because at that point, the podcast and the, po the podcast uh, description, and even if you want the transcription of the podcast, they become, uh, they become uh, blog posts on your website. So you can get your podcast pages ranked on Google and that would also increase as because the podcast also becomes an entity that will become the that will increase the uh, entity validation on iTunes teacher and everything you know everything else so yeah and don't forget your remarketing tags on those pages so that you can remarket the shit out of them <laughs> oh yeah yeah 100 percent 100 percent so anybody else have any suggestions for that okay the next question is also, do you guys have any packages that are more specifically niche like, i.e. packages for real estate, plumbers, podcasts, et cetera? I'm getting a lot of requests for more specifically tailored solutions from prospects. Anything you can offer beyond general SEO power shield solution or is that it? Well, that's it because you create all the relevancy through the keywords and the, you know, the entity links that you're adding into SEO power shield. So that's, I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense that, that we create from scratch. A, a, an SEO power shield, which includes the drive stack and G site and everything based upon the niche that you provide in the keywords, right? And they'll go out, we go out and find relevant images, add the images, find relevant content, add the content. So we create a unique niche specific drive stack 
or SEO Power Shield uh, for each and every order that's submitted. So when you say, do we have any more special, specifically niche like, every drive stack we build is specifically niche like to that specific customer's order. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's no, there's no reason to create templated products because every product that we create um, for the SEO Shield is 100% niche specific to that particular project, that particular entity, corporation, organization, whatever you want to call it. Well, not, not only niche specific, but also brand location yeah. and keyword specific. I mean, we get, we get that. So, so every, yeah, as you said, everyone is different. There's nothing uh, that, that needs to be done on the, at that level. And yeah, Rob just, uh, just uh, jumped into the chat and said, we need to do some more SEO power shield education for people. Yes, yeah. we absolutely do. We need to tell people what it actually is, what it does. People think it's just something general because we call it SEO power shield, but it works on any niche. It works at any level. It works local. It works for, for and that's why, that's why I took on the national, correct? Uh, in, in Southland Pass, you were doing the local. So why do another local? I took on the national. That's why we went with Deria and did the e-commerce case study that we're only sharing in the mastermind. And that's done for a reason because we don't want anyone spamming a client that's making millions, okay? I mean, and it's really that simple. We need to protect that client's asset. But the guy is making millions on this. We're not talking pennies. We're talking an e-commerce website that, that draws millions per month. And it's still doing so right now, right as we speak. During the crisis, they're selling and selling and selling and selling and haven't, haven't, they haven't slowed down. So guys, think about that. Think about the power that's there for anything. And, and I've said it before, but yeah, I guess we need more education on this. Anything that you take on, on the web, whatever project it is, whether you want to do a YouTube video, whatever it is that you want to do, you throw a power shield around that sucker, and away you go. That's when the fun really starts. There you go. And then he says, thanks so much, guys. Stay safe. Thank you, Nigel. Appreciate that. Uh, Santiago says, for those of us who already have the branding you're, course. You're missing one. Did I? Um, after Nigel. Uh, yeah, I have. I have oh, one. I'm sorry. I, I didn't Ed. realize I missed that one. So thank you. Ed says, most of the examples shown in your videos don't end up pointing to a money site. DC Plumber is a G site. That's because the G site is the money site for that project. Land Solutions is a ClickFunnels page and G site no, the ranking. No, it isn't. Land Solutions is WordPress. Yes. I'm still failing to understand how Juice is ultimately passed to the money site since we won't be linking the products and categories directly from the stack. Yet yeah, you, you, yes, you can. This question is, uh, you are misinformed. <laughs> so what do we start with this one? Um, is it the ID the page solves this? So, I, you know, I, I don't understand where the confusion is other than maybe some of the public stuff that we've shared because we're certainly not sharing all of our private uh, campaigns, but the ones that we do share, they have different scenarios. And we did that intentionally because there's always gonna be different scenarios with different projects, right? So some projects don't have a money site. They might just be using the G site as the money site. Other projects might just use the GMB website right so the google my business website is the primary money site but then the g site often will take over as well in, in the drive stack but for uh any sort of project whatsoever whether it's a, a single page land it's click funnels landing page which can become a money site like alpha land realty for example that's a single page click font well it's got a thank you page but it's a it's a click funnels landing page that's the money site so i've got the drive stack and the g site and everything links back to the money site which is just a ClickFunnels landing page. So I think your terminology, maybe um, you might be confusing your terminology because a money site can be whatever you make it. It doesn't have to be a self-hosted WordPress site to be a money site. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let me just add, add before you go on that, that juice is passed from the SEO PowerShell to the money site. That's, that's where our, our linking is done because there, there's so much uh, trust and authority in that power shield that whatever link building we do to it, 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 it becomes, you know, we, we call it a link laundering machine. It launders the link so that power, only power, good power is transferred over to the money site instead of, instead of garbage that, that can get you uh, uh, hit in some kind of way where, where it's algorithmic in nature. You don't want that. 
and we try to avoid that at all costs. That's why we do it this way. So understanding how juice is transferred is it's transferred through the power shield. The power shield has two purposes. It, it, it's to protect your site and to transfer clean power over to the money site. So I think that that's where the, the disconnect might be. Yeah. And so the idea is it says, you know, uh, you don't link to your category pages and product pages. Yes, you can. And in fact, you can link to them from within the G site and or embed the pages, which is what I do. Um, a lot of times I don't even have an actual physical link from like a traditional HTML link from a G site page to the corresponding page on the money site. I just have the money site embedded, either a page or a post, right? So it's either a page or a post embedded in the G site. And a lot of times I don't even link directly from that in strategic places I do like top of silo pages on the G site will link over to the silo page on the money site. So the same thing for e-commerce, right? Uh, I don't do e-commerce, but it's the same sort of structure, right? It's still built the same. And so your category pages could be like top of silo pages, essentially. So why not embed that into the theme mirror G site page? You want to create a, a physical link to it? That's fine. I just like the embeds better uh, because I, 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 I try to silo my G sites. So I do internal linking in my G sites to match the type of internal linking structure I have on my money site, but I do everything from my money site is embeds in the G site, if that makes sense. So there's a number of ways to do it like that. Um, but as far as like, that's how you're passing the juice, right? You're passing relevancy, you're passing authority and you're link laundering, right? You're cleaning any potential negative uh, negatives through the, the Google domains, the Google assets. Does that make sense? So anyways, we, we're, we have, We've been getting a lot of e-commerce questions lately about how to apply this stuff to e-commerce. So that is definitely something we just talked about this yesterday, my partners and I, during our corporate meeting. That is something we are going to do. Uh, in fact, Marco and Rob are going to be fleshing out more of the e-commerce stuff that Deddy has been doing um, to provide more um, training about how to apply to e-commerce. And we'll have a PDF available and all that kind of stuff, guys. So it's coming. Please be patient. Okay. But that's a good yeah, question, by the way. One last thing is it's no different. I mean, that, that's why we don't go specifically into e-com. I, I, I've already said that the only difference is how, how you target, whether you target location, which would, be, would then be local, or you don't target location, which would then be anything else that's not local. And it's the, 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 the exact thing. You take the, lap, uh, the top level category in your e-commerce site widgets, and you move that to an, once you get the, the, the SEO power shield delivered, which is the, the market level category, you put that on, on an inner page and you create that inner stack that only deals with widgets, not the brand, but the widget because you've already, already created the branded site, the, the you know, Acme widget company. And so now you want all the, all of the keyword research and you want all the items, everything that you did on, on the home page, you do it on the inner page, except this is keyword specific rather than uh, brand plus keyword specific. You, you can start talking about the products, you can start talking about uh, you know, just whatever it is that you have inside that widget, top market level category, you can even break it down into subcategories and add other inner pages so you start siloing that inner page, but it, 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 work, it doesn't work any different than it does for local. It requires a little bit more work than it would for local, but that's because you have probably more categories more market level categories and, and subcategories that you need to target and silo. That, that would be the only difference. But yeah, we're gonna do a little bit, whatever we can reveal about Dedia, we will. Uh, I'm not saying how much, but we will. Okay. Guys, I'm gonna answer Santiago's and Brian's really quickly and then we're gonna wrap it up because it's five o'clock and I have, I've got a real estate, I gotta go get some documents notarized for a, a closing that occurred today. So I, uh, $4,800 profit, I'll take it. <laughs> so Santiago says, for those of us who already have the branding courses, the hyper-targeted geo-targeted traffic module mentioned 2X Your Agency available to purchase by itself. Yes, Santiago, just contact support at semanticmastery.com uh, and ask. Um, I know Adam said that that is available to purchase separately, but just contact support. We'll get you a link. It's, um, it, it, it's a good course for driving... Uh, local traffic, like lo targeted local traffic via YouTube. It's, it's a really good course for that. And in fact, I've got a, a case study that I just set up. I spent a day and a half setting it up this week, Monday and half of yesterday setting it up, but specifically where I've got a landing page, single page landing page, 
just like we were just talking about with um, Ed's question, single page landing page on a subdomain. It's a ClickFunnels landing page on a subdomain. And, all, and I bought a location shield, which doesn't include a syndication network. So uh, it's the location shield, which is just an RYS stack and a, dry, a Google site and an ID page specifically optimized for that one landing page for one location. And then I'm driving nothing but traffic, relevant traffic. That's it. That's all the SEO work I'm going to do to it. And then I'm going to drive relevant traffic to it from Google ads, from YouTube and from cold traffic display ads. And then remarketing once it accrues enough to start remarketing and see if I can rank it um, with just that alone. And so I just set that up, finished setting that up yesterday. The ads are running. My ads are approved. So uh, right now I'm just tracking it. And I'm going to be covering that in the, in the um, uh, mastermind. So come check it out. Last question is Brian says, what are your thoughts on multiple RYS stacks per site? Say a different RYS stack for every major, every money page or silo. Uh, thoughts on multiple RYS stacks per site. Is there a point where it's too many, too many become counterproductive? Yeah, it's unnecessary. You don't need to do that because you build the primary stack, right? The, the primary stack, which is brand plus primary keyword association. And then you build everything else inside of that stack. Um, so for example, for every uh, money page or silo, so essentially for every, every product or service, which should have its own silo, right? Um, the, each one of those would have its own folder inside the branded stack. And then inside that folder would be all of the different files that are optimized for that keyword set, whatever that silo is, right? It's going to have a, a keyword set uh, that specifically for that silo. So all of the files inside of that keyword optimized folder, so it's essentially a silo folder, are going to be optimized with those keyword sets and all linking to any to the, the, the top of silo page, as well as any supporting pages or posts within that silo. So essentially you're linking from everything in that folder is only gonna be linking to um, pages or posts within that particular silo on the money site. So there's no reason to continue buying different drive stacks. You want to expand your existing drive stack, which within about a week or so, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have that drive stack expansion available as, a, as an add-on service in MGYB. Is that correct, Marco? Uh, yes, as soon as we add the, the expansion, the ability to add or order expansions on the website, that you know, depends on how long that takes. I don't know. It's coming soon. But yeah, it, it's, it, it's coming. We're already uh, in beta. We, we are building with it. it. It's creating awesome dry stack. It, it's creating them our way, right? Which has been, it's, it's been a pain. It's been about a year in the making, guys. It's, it's that easy. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Anyways, guys, I got to run. So thanks, everybody, for being here. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.